So we're back in studio again and what I'm going to do is open a document for translation and just show you a few simple things on how to translate the document. Nothing complicated. I just want to cover three things in the settings before I start because this makes sense um, to improve the way you do things in the future. So if you're only using open document you might only ever need to do this once. You click on tools, options. First thing you do is you go to the editor and languages where you ensure that this is the right direction round for the way you want to work. It's not essential but if you do this it will save you time when you're using Open Document because you won't have to keep selecting the languages all the time. They'll already be selected for you. So in this case I want to go from Welsh to English in this example I'm going to translate. So I select Welsh to English to begin with. The next thing I'm going to do is add my translation memory. So I'm going to come down here to my translation memory and automated translation and I'm going to click on add file based translation memory. Pick it and add it. That's it. Make sure it's enabled. Make sure it's set to update. You can use it for concordance and lookup. The reason you have these different settings here is because you can actually have as many translation memories as you like, which you couldn't do in Workbench. Um, and you can have different settings on each one. You can apply different penalties to each one so that one comes before the other, etc., etc. And you could also, if you wanted to, create your translation memory from here. You didn't have to even have to do it beforehand. So you could do it as you go. I'm going to add a term base. I'm going to add my term base here. So this is the one we created with the glossary converter. That's it. And click on OK. So now I'm ready to go. So I click on Open Document. Pick my document for translation. You can see my language is already selected, Welsh to English. My translation memory is already selected. My term base is also selected. And you can see that when I open the file I'm getting a result from my term base. It was only a small term base, it contained nothing but terms so it looks a bit empty this window um, but it's there and it's simple. And the reason why it's useful is because if I translate this first segment you see what's happening when I type the first letter that word test is coming from my term base even though I've got a different case here so this is a, a capital T rather than a lower, a lower case T it's still identifying it. If I typed a little one I get a little one that's because it's case insensitive. It can be case sensitive depending on how you want to, to configure it and how it wants to work. And you know that this is coming from the term base because in the source segment you can see that little red line going over the top of the word. That's telling me that here's the word in the, in the um, term recognition and here's the translation. So to select it I just press enter. So if I just do that again I have the test very quick. That's my first one. Now to confirm that and put that into the translation memory, because you can see there's no matches in here at the moment, I can click on this button here, confirm translated, or I can just use the keyboard shortcut, control plus enter. The keyboard shortcuts are also configurable, so you could change these to something else if you wanted. I could use translation, confirm and move to next, unconfirmed segment. So there's a number of different ways I could confirm it. I'm just going to press control enter, and it moves down to the next segment, ready for me to go. If I move back into the segment, just using the arrow, so I don't have any of these open segment, closed segment, all this stuff, you don't have any of that. When I move back up, you can now see the result from the translation memory. So I'm getting a context match on that first segment. If I move down to the next segment. This is a test. Just do a couple of these. It's not a test. Now what I'm getting is a fuzzy match. So I'm getting a fuzzy match because in my translation memory, I had already translated this uh, the pre previous segment. This is as this is a test. What I actually want is this should be this is a stupid test. So I'm getting a hit from my term base, and I confirm it. But just to go back to that one to look at it, you'll notice that the fuzzy match on the bottom one, the 87% is coloured, and the 84% above is not. It was colored to begin with, but because I changed it and edited it, it removes the coloring and highlights around it just with a, a, a black border and that's it. So I can see from looking in the SDLX lift, which is this bilingual file, that I took, a t uh, I took a fuzzy match from my translation memory and I edited it. So I've got a bit of history there explaining what I actually did with that term. Here I want to be, this is a short test, short test, 
so that now colouring has disappeared. The next segment down is a 100% match. Now what I'm also getting here, as you can see at the top here, is I'm getting all the lists of the different results that are in my translation memory window. And I can see the differences between them because the words are, are marked out, not with the same colouring the way you used to use in Workbench, but rather it's a, like a track change effect. So you can see that in this segment here, um, the word beer has been has been removed altogether, and I just want the first part of it because I only want this as the test. I don't want this as the short test. If I wanted to apply something different, I can look at it by using Alt Page Up or Page Down. You can see if you look in the translation memory results window at the top, that's moving up and down as I'm using this keyboard shortcut, and it's also selecting the different hits. I could also put them straight into the TM if I wanted to by using ALT and the number. So I could use ALT 2, ALT 3, or ALT 1 to apply it. Or if I'm in the right place, just with the mouse for example, I could, I could apply the translation by using ALT T or CTRL T. Or I can do it from here. All these same commands are up here. So you can see them all in here. So you can see, there we go, that's what I was using. ALT page up, ALT page down. So. This is a test, that's fine with me, it's a 100% match, I'll select that one. The next one, this test sucks. This should be, this is not a stupid test. And what I'll show you here, just before we move down too much further, is how to run a concordance. So to run a concordance on this, I could just, if I wanted to use this word for example, double click the word to highlight it and press F3. When I do that I'm running a concordance on the source. I can also run a concordance on the target. If I double click the word test in the target and press F3 again now I'm running a concordance on the target. It is possible to run a concordance on the source from the target and on the source sorry and on the target from the source. Um, different shortcuts, different ways of doing it possibly off the menu. There we go. So you can select a concordance off here as well by right clicking. The right, right click menu is pretty pretty handy like any Windows thing. So it should be not is not a test. But a test. Okay, this test. We'll just do a couple a couple more of these before we get down to something a little more interesting which is here. So what we're getting here now, you can see the source text from the WYSIWYG effect in Studio is green. Um, and you can see the difference up here plus this little formatting difference bound here because I'm being knocked back at 1% because of the fact the formatting is different. So the text is okay but the formatting is different. So the text should say this test is green and I want to select this green text. So in order to get the green text, this is what I actually want to be green, I can press control comma and you can see that as I arrow up and down there the selected text moves, but if I now press enter, if I click on the side there you can see that that has now been selected and it says this text is green. Now it's done that without using any tags or anything like that, which looks kind of magical because Studio has this WYSIWYG effect and very tagless environment, which is very nice for reading and when you're working. But actually the tags are there. And if I move out of tag ID mode, which is where I am at the moment, and I come down to displaying the tags, Control shift h you can see the tags are there. Sorry, and if I now move out of tag ID mode, and I click on this, you can see the actual tags themselves. So we have different ways of displaying the tags. There is an article on how to handle tags in this blog. Probably better to read that because it's a clearer explanation than I'm going to give here. But I prefer to work with the tag ID mode. Now interestingly for this one, the formatting has been selected and the formatting is correct even though there's no tags. And that's because the tags are in there but they've been moved outside of the segment by Studio. And if you use the display filter that's up here, and if you can't see the display filter, click on View, Toolbars, Display Filter. And if I click on All Content, what you'll see here is that the tags are there. They're just not actually inside the segment. If you ever wanted them in the segment, you can actually drag them in. It's a little known fact. I'll just reverse that. But you can put the tags in if they're not there. So I'll move back to All Segments to hide them all. 
and I correct my text. So it shouldn't say this test is rough, it should say this test is easy. Control Enter. I moved down. So we're onto some more tags here now. As I said, I'm not going to show you a number of a lots of different ways to show the tags in any real detail. So I'll just very quickly show you this. And I'll just red test. So as I'm working, I'm just selecting the tags as I'm going this time, which I didn't do last time. Control dot closes it off, and I've entered. And this time I want this green. Test is red. And actually what would have been nice is to perhaps have these words in my term base. So I can select the words, right click and add new term. There is a shortcut, I could have used that. And save that term. So I've now saved that term in my in my in my term base. So I come back down to my segment. Now you can see I've got red in there, and I could do the same with green. Add new term, and that's my green selected as well. So you can see there's a number of ways of different working there. So now I'm getting more and more terms that are starting to show up as I'm working. And that's about all I'm going to show you. Oh, apart from one thing, I nearly forgot how to save the target document. So if I wanted to save the target document here, I would now say File, Save Target As, and it brings me back to the same folder as where my original document is with the same name. So if you're using the open document approach, be very wary of this, and I always put a T underscore in front to say that it's a target. And so then I save, I suppose I should, I, I, just to save myself overwriting it, click on Save, that's my document saved. And if I come back to my folder, there's my T getting started, and if I open it up, oh, you can't see it because it's on my other screen. There it is. There's the file. So pretty cool. So that was straightforward and easy. And probably what I should have shown you very quickly, um, and I didn't show you, is the preview. It's probably on this side of the screen for you, but I actually moved it over there because I like it there better. And the reason I like it there better is because when I'm working, you can see there's a real-time preview, and it's highlighted where I am at the moment. Um, if I want to get back to the work after the preview, I can do this really easy and carry on working. If it's on the right hand side of the screen, when the preview comes out it goes over where I'm working, so I moved it to the other side. Moving things are very simple in Studio. You can move a lot of these things about. You can unpin it, so get rid of the auto hide. That fixes it. And now I can pick it up. Oops. Sorry, make that a floating window. That's better, sorry. I had that pinned and I was trying to move it while it was pinned. I can now move it and I can drop it at the top. On there, I can drop it down there. You can see the window turns blue every time I move this. So it gives me some idea of where it's going to go if I was to let go. Um, but I want to put it over here again because I like it being over on this side. So you just drag and drop and put it where you were. If you make a total mess of the windows and you want to know how to put it back, let's just put that back towards the height. That's also particularly easy. You just go to View reset window layout and it puts everything back where it was before you started. And that's about it. That's all I'm going to show you for this demonstration. It went on far longer than I wanted it to go um, and I tried a number of times to make that a really small presentation but I get carried away and just tell you probably far too much. But I hope that was useful anyway as a quick introduction to how to use Studio.